What song was that? Yes. In what meter? In three. But it could have gone into a fast four. It could have gone into a half time. Could have gone anywhere. We're just getting to know each other and we're just figuring out what the heck I put on the page. Um, as a leader, I try to give my band stuff that they can totally mess around with. I don't like it being too predictable. So that's kind of the idea behind that one is, and it was actually a lesson for me in hearing melodies. I said, I'm gonna write a tune, I'm gonna write a count contrafact over the tune, but we don't play it till the end. And so it helps to build all, all the solos and everyone gets to hear kind of a mini big band behind them, hopefully, at some point. Um, yeah, so that's just that, that's Autumn Leaves. It was like, I was sick and tired of playing the melody, so might as well write a melody, right? Just write your own. Especially if it helps you get to know the song better. We get kind of tired of reading the real book version and it looks really boring the way it is if we are using that at all, which I hope you're not. You don't need to. There's like a million versions of that song available. And uh, yeah, that was fun. That got me out of my feeling like I had the flu funk all day. How are you guys doing? Excuse me? And why am I looking at all these empty seats here and you guys are all the way up there? Is that planned? It's kind of annoying, but I'll deal with it. Because I can't do the stuff I wanted to do with you if you're all up in the balcony. But it's a little too late to shift things around. So um, we'll move on to, first of all, let's see. Let's just learn a tune. And if you guys, I can't even see you up there, so I'm going to trust that you're going to focus and help and I'm gonna try and divide you up into groups so that you can sing and we can learn this next tune. Because I don't know if you've noticed this, but when you play music, you read, you tend to not be po totally in the moment. How many people feel that? Yeah, all of us, pretty well. Unless you're like Wayne Shorter and you're writing symphonies every day and you, whatever you look at on the page, you're already able to compose with, um, which I'm aspiring to be you know, as a composer, as a player. Every note that comes out of my horn, I'm hoping it's not a lick. You know, a lick is sort of a sellout on creativity. It's cool in a way. You have to learn some sort of licks to get some sort of idea what, you know, one, three, and five are in a major triad. But who says it has to be in that particular direction? Is there some Bible on the scale starts on the root and goes up to the root <laughs> in a totally unmusical fashion? So that's my, my biggest lesson I learned and gave to myself by being a rebel at a young age when I went, well, that's boring. Da 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 da. Oh, Dorian, hmm, really hearing that? Not. So, you know, seeing that stuff, especially because I was really bad at math, so it was just like, oh, great, there's another formula I don't get. <laughs> now I'm really screwed. Um, so, um, between having a little bit of piano chops, because my mother was a piano player, my sister plays piano and composes, and uh, we had a lot of music around the house. I always take that for granted. I was hearing really great music all the time. Um, I used that kind of background to create with and rebel against my Clark studies. <laughs> Anybody, how many trumpet players in the house? You all know what Clark studies are, right? Na -na 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 -na. Also, very boring. Very monotonous, very uncreative. Who says you have to play them like that? Is there a rule? Oh, your classical teacher. Of course, you want to be even and you want to play them in time. But who says you can't play them as triplets? Who says you can't turn them into Phrygian or Dorian? Who says you can't have a drone going on a keyboard or on some kind of garage band program so you can start improvising over C minor seven? Is there a rule? Again, I'm just questioning your, the rules that are out there that get in the way of us listening. So, first lesson, first request to all of you, if you feel that feeling like, oh, I'm always reading and I don't even hear what I'm seeing, step away from the page and take one chord at a time. We're gonna do that now, because we don't have a ton of time. So let's just learn, we're gonna learn the progression just of the A section of this tune, maybe even just the first two bars. We'll see how it goes. So Laura, if you could just play a B flat pedal. Sing it. Everybody. Um, now. I'm not even gonna tell you the chord quality. We're gonna have a little guessing game. Keep singing that root and call it one major seven. Just like a little mantra, one major seven. Everybody feeling it? You can even go, oh, 
if you have to, whatever, to get you out of your head and being all uptight about um, singing. Oh, you can whisper. Uh, um, one major seven. Now, it's kind of going to be a one major seven chord. I'm going to play the melody. What note is that? Fifth. You should all say fifth. If you have perfect pitch and you said an F, that's cute, but it's not what I'm looking for here. <laughs> I appreciate your gift, but hang on. So, um, again, sing the fifth. Sing the root. Beautiful. Oh, sounds great. What's this note? So many different answers. How about just call it sharp 11? That's what the chord's going to say. Sharp 11 in this particular case on this tune. It's not going to say flat 5. It's going to say sharp 11. Sing that. This half of the room, sing the root. Ba. This half of the room, sing the sharp 11. Ba. And I'm going to play. Very Schoenberg. Very modern sounding harmony, Duke Ellington. Okay, so that's the one major seven chord. Now let's find the next chord. Let's just play the, uh, the first four bars together, Laura. Here we go. One, two, one, two. That's it. Yes. So what did it go to? The second chord, anybody? It was pretty fast, right? So if you're going to transcribe, that's how you're going to feel like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. That was, it's over. Now, back in Charlie Parker and Miles Davis' day, it was over because they didn't have recording devices and people weren't able to go listen back and use the amazing slow downer and then check it out on the web and go, oh, look at all the versions of this song. It goes to this chord and it's an F. It's, but what is the F in relation to home? So let's play our home key again. Everybody sing one. Home, one major seven. Now, play the root of the second chord. What would we call that? Five. Oh, yeah, guys. Five. <laughs> and girls, you can go five. Five, three, five. What kind of chord is it? Just outline it. Play the, play the, play the root again of the second chord. And here's the melody. What part of the chord is that? Play the root. Sing the root, sing five, everybody sing five. Yes, it's an F, Smarty Pants with perfect pitch, concert E flat, but it's the, what kind of seven? Flat seven, everybody sing flat seven. So you've actually learned pretty well the heart of these first four bars of this song. You want to sing it? Let's just loop those first four bars. Band? do that all day. Are you hearing it? It's like you can learn a tune like that. It's called transcribing and you have to do it. It takes a little longer. The process is way more rewarding and you'll remember the song. So check it out. Let's figure out what the bridge goes to. Can you play the root of the bridge? Sing that. Sing home again. Sing home one major seven. And what does every great jazz song always have to do at some point because it is coming from the... Go to that chord. Four. Four. The blues. Four. Sing four. Four. Not E flat. It is technically an E flat. Four. Now play the color of that chord. Four what? Major, minor, diminished, augmented? <laughs> 
Minor, thank you. Minor seven. Somebody yelled it out clearly. Four, minor seven. So if your ears aren't hearing all this stuff yet, you got to work on your intervals. You got to work on your pitch. And once your pitch is good, that's what helped me on the trumpet to become a better improviser when I realized I was flat and sharp all over the shop. And then I would miss notes because I would hear something for what I thought it was, but I was missing it by a fragment because my ears weren't lining up with something in tune. So in essence, what I use And I want to clear up a small issue that happens, especially with some younger band directors and people who aren't hip to the fact that this input on here, the quarter inch input, is for guitars and basses. So they can see the little this go back and forth. Saxophones and trumpets, in my opinion, and bra brass players, get screwed up by that. We start to doubt ourselves and then we use our eyes and our, e our brains and not our ears to try and focus our sound and it gets smaller and everything gets tight. Are you in agreement? Cool. And if you want to beat me up outside afterwards over saying that, I'm sorry. But I'm still endorsing the cork. I just think it has to be used wisely. And this thing is great because look, you got every key. There's only that many to learn and hang out with. Right now we're hanging out with B flat, right? We're hanging out with the home of B-flat major. Where is it? Wow, and I'm resonating it. That's awesome. That's what I spend my time doing in practice time. So let's play the tune for you. And listen for that bridge when it goes to the four. When we get there, I want you guys to yell out, four minor. I might even give you a cue, OK?
get ready for the bridge. Yell out four and sing it. Bridge, one, two, three, four, four. One, four. Three, six, two, five. One, six. Seven, four minor, four major, then it's a pedal. One, five, one, one, seven, two, five, one. It's really easy. A bridge. Jazz is fun. <laughs> and we, we didn't rehearse that tune on purpose. We discussed, you know, what chords each of us figured out by listening to different recordings. I said, well, let's do this song. So any of you guys can learn that. You can all learn that song by ear. You don't need music at all. I don't have any music here on, on my stand for it. Somewhere I do. With all of these codes. So we could do it in F sharp if we wanted right now. But we won't because we don't have time. But it's the, you know, just think of it. Can you see that? Code. It's easy code. One Roman numeral major seven. Not B flat major seven. It is, but it isn't, right? It's home. Just think of home when you're shedding the next time. Go, oh, I want to play all these crazy licks through this crazy tune. Geez, let's check out what the key center is first. Hmm, that's basically the song. You want to play the song. You don't want to just play bar by bar or every two beats of something that doesn't connect to the next thing. So it takes time, hence one of the songs we're going to play tonight at the concert in small group, which I call Center Song. You've got to center yourself. So this is one thing I want to do with you all, even if you're in the balcony. Stand up, even on the floor. Put all your stuff down. Okay. Shh. I can tell you all needed to move for a second there. Any ballerinas in the room? <laughs> my daughter is starting to take ballet. I'm going to get my butt kicked, I can tell. Okay, shh, shh, shh. So take your, I'm left-handed, so I use my left foot. I put well, the crook of my, I put my heel, actually, into the crook of my big toe of my right foot. So do that. So whatever you're doing, it's way better barefoot. You've, you've seen me play in spring weather. I have no shoes. I don't like shoes. But um, it's too cold-ish right now. Uh, so put your heel right into the crook of your big toe. Now, keeping that foot that the heel is turned off, turn it back. Keep the toe on the ground and just flip it back so you're totally shoulder width. Try it again if you messed it up. So heel into the crook of the big toe. If you're using your left foot, keep the left toe embedded in the floor and put the heel back parallel. Parallel? Yeah. So your feet are parallel to one another. Now let your feet sink into the ground. Sink. This is shoulder width. This is going to help every brass player in the house when they're standing up. This is your shoulders. It's called gravity. Feel it. Feel how your feet are sinking. They're going to take your hands out of your pockets. As cool as you look. Let them, let the shoulders back and down and let your body fill with some air. <gasps> take a deep breath. All right, follow me. I'm going to put the mic down. This is really easy. You can't do the whole thing because you're going to hit somebody or you're going to fall off the balcony or propel someone off the balcony. Keep your knees soft. 
To find that magic spot, lock your knees as hard as you can. Keep your arms in the air. Keep breathing to your bellies. Shh, shh, shh. This will give you energy, I know, but hang on. Use energy later. Keep your knees really locked tight. Now let them go. Release them and just shake them out. Keep your arms up in the air. And keep, this is called the third eye. I'm sure none of you get nervous playing when you have to do a solo, but when I was your age, I got really nervous. Oh, just kidding. So this, if someone had told me this before, I think I would have played better. Third eye is this one right here, middle, between the nose. Think of it going straight ahead, piercing across the room as you're taking that breath. Bring your hands back down. Drop your shoulders. Just keep those legs nice and loose. And see, you already look better. All of you look more beautiful and radiant, and your energy is starting to come out of the crown of your head, and it's just like crazy. Wait till you play with this energy. Because everything flows. The fingers start flowing, and the ideas start flowing, and the confidence is there, because you're grounded. Now, if you can keep those knees soft and sit back down without just slumping down, keep that same energy, and sit on the edge of your seat. Bend your knees, sit down, keep yourselves long, and you look beautiful too. Yes, amazing. Okay, so try and think of that after texting and computers and schlepping horn cases around and losing your sense of, everybody say it after me, gravity. gravity. Loud, gravity. 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 Yeah. If you play from, if you play from a gravity position, you can fly across the ocean like I do many times, jump off a plane, get on stage and play the best you've ever played in that particular situation with jet lag, a cold, whatever, and just play. So be aware of how much energy you have in yourselves to use if you focus. Third eye, gravity. Any questions from anybody? Let's see. Yell it out. This is the time. Yes. No. Anybody know who Kenny Wheeler is? Nope. That's because he's British. And he's Canadian. Two strikes against him as far as being known in this country. Of course, not a lot of great jazz musicians are known well in this country, which is ironic since this is where the music comes from. Um, so, on that note, Kenny Wheeler is a great musician. Google him. I'm doing a project because I love his music. I met him and I, I hear... I hear his scenery in my head because I grew up with some kind of open space that was contrasted by living in New York for 20 years, 20 something years. Any other quick questions? I think we have a few minutes. Yes? Well, I actually don't play with her anymore, so I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it was a great experience. I'm doing more small group stuff now, writing more. I'm putting out a project that's coming out in April called Kind of New. It's a tribute to Miles, and it's, uh, it's funky. I think you might like it. It's like some tunes with electronics and lots of kind of really groovy New York and LA musicians. So yeah, a lot of different directions I'm going in these days, playing and writing and making that process part of my day-to-day -day life. I feel like I'm losing you guys. Any more questions? Yes. Where? There, yes. What artists have influenced me the most? Well, I just said Miles Davis, definitely. Obsessed with him. And shh, you guys, you gotta be quiet. I know we're almost done, but I listen for a living. So it's really hard. <laughs> um, Miles Davis, for sure. Joni Mitchell, one of my favorite musicians of all time. Right? Uh, being Canadian, I got to grow up hearing her a lot. Duke Ellington and Count Basie, Louis Armstrong, Clark Terry. How many of you know who Clark Terry is? You all should know who Clark Terry is. Say that name after me. Clark Terry. Now say, I will Google Clark Terry. Thank you. Thank you. Essential. Bubbly joy and greatness. Where, where? One more question. Yes, at the back. Yeah. Yeah, yes. How long are you going to play trumpet for us? Today, um, three hours. <laughs> I know. Uh, quick, a quick answer to that, though, I think is helpful for those of you who may be going, oh, this instrument's hard. I think I'm going to quit and become a lawyer. You can do both. 
Not that I would know, because I'm not a lawyer. I just play the trumpet for a living. But um, I wanted to play the trombone, and I was denied, because my older sister played trombone. So you can hear my voice is low and very sensual. Trombone and I connected, but we weren't allowed to be mates for the rest of our lives. So trumpet came my way, and I had a nice, healthy detachment to it, because I didn't really want to play it. I just wanted to play music. So that was really a nice thing and also very difficult. <laughs> it's taken me a long time to get good at the instrument and every day I'm learning something new. Every day is new. There's no day when I go, ah, oh, I got this. Oh yeah, no problem. It's always a very humbling and a very um, kind of a Zen centering experience if I look at it that way rather than, oh, this thing sucks it's so hard. Because that's dumb. You know, people come up and go, man, you must have really big lungs. Well, I don't know. I mean, I played when I was eight and a half months pregnant, so I guess, but what's the point, you know? It's an instrument. You learn to play it, you get a good teacher, and you start studying the music. So I hope you all do. I've heard some of you play, and it sounds amazing. See you at the concert tonight. Thank you all. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>